was all because social workers turned a blind eye, even though they knew what was going on, for example, and they were catalysts in all this, same as the police in some ways. Mm. Um, but I, I find that social work, I mean, the thing is, I mean, I find that social workers have stuck their nose in one where they shouldn't, and they've actually removed children from their parents um, just on the say so of, of, of a bitter neighbor and things like this. So, although I'm not saying that there's cases where where where, um, where where they haven't done the right thing either, by the way. So I'm not saying because I think taking a child from an abusive parent is probably important, but um, they don't, re you know, I, I, I might just suppose we all only, we only hear about the disaster things rather than things they do on a daily basis. So I, I, I will accept some, I'll accept some criticism on that one that I may actually be wrong on that because mm. you, you only hear the things that go wrong rather than things that they do right. But um, having having been in the police and having dealt with social workers, I've got to say, I can't. I'm not. They're not my favourite people. Well, in, indeed. Um, uh, so, I mean, you're, you're obviously talking from uh, personal professional experience. The the my personal professional experience um, is that when you're trying to section someone, a approved social worker with special training. Is, is usually the person who's least willing to have that person sectioned, whereas the doctors seem to be much more pragmatic and positive about having someone sectioned. Um, and I think it's crucial really to have at least two people involved because, um, as we have many times said, uh, humans, 98% of all decisions are emotion-based rather than logic. And it would be very worrying if uh, the decision on whether to withdraw someone's freedom is based on the decision of just one person so i think really two people is, is absolutely crucial and it will be very concerning to me if it was only one doctor but it's especially as i always say the law the, the rule of nature is mediocrity yeah well the thing is when you talk about this bill to, and it literally was because there wasn't really any major news about it and it was literally slipped through parliament um, because I think they knew they were going to get some blowback on this. But do you not think that people actually have, I mean, particularly in the world of technology and AI and um, data collection, which is basically what they're talking about, data being the new, um, is really is going to be the new level of um, oil, you know, um, in, in terms of its value, um, albeit specific data, do you not think that this is a a way for governments, probably even around the world, to actually um, start producing this Big Brother type um, environment? Or you know, like, do you ever read the book 1984? No, but uh, I absolutely take your point, and someone else did raise that with me. And um, actually, I have no problem with increased state control. Because the converse of increasingly permissive societies uh, and and the excess uh, associated with that is is a harbinger to collapse of the society itself, um, and that's what we've been seeing in the West. Uh, and I, as I said many many times, the increasing permissiveness is is really uh, of which mat excess materialism is a symptom um, is really a plateau on the sine wave before you have collapse of that particular society. And over the centuries, over the millennia, that's exactly what you see with civilizations. A slow start, a rapid acceleration, a plateau associated with excess debauchery, orgies, and anything you can think of, followed by collapse of that particular civilization. Um, so if... Um, you have increased state control and reduced permissiveness, then, then that's actually a good thing in terms of survival of the civilization. Actually, and um, I'll probably actually have to disagree with you in, in many cases. Um, and, 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 here's, and here's my reason why. You see, the thing is, the, as artificial intelligence and technology becomes even more efficient, um, we're at a stage now where even, even, even now you can do it, you can predict someone's buying behavior 
just by um, just by actually looking at the data that they actually have, um, which means you can actually manipulate their way of thinking, how they vote, how they um, how they buy, how they behave, and all these sort of things. I mean, I remember there was I think a thing on Facebook about two months before a woman was pregnant, she was already getting um, baby stuff being seeded into her brain. Um, you know, through familiarity, you know, very, being repetitive of, of putting stuff on, and literally, literally in front of her in adverts and things like this. Um, and if you can actually, and if actually the government can do that, you don't even know whether you are, um, whether you're actually making your own choices or not. Now, some people could argue that's a good thing. I don't, because I think you're taking away the, that, that level of freedom of choice and freedom of thought which is what we want, and then they become a very totalitarian... But we just, but, 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 but we've already said that humans are incapable of making rational decisions most of the time. Some are, huh? some are. Uh, but but I, I don't like the idea of having my, uh, of, of, of distributing my data. In fact, one thing I've, considered being, I've been considering working on the last couple of months is actually how can you pre protect your identity from all the um, commercial commercial company, companies out there who are looking to keep on selling to you even stuff that you don't need Correct. Um, so 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 is there a way that you can actually protect your identity so i'm currently looking at that even whether it's actually coming up with a pseudonym of your own name in some cases just well just the, the the idea is that the solution is then you go on a a virtual private network and you you pay three pounds a month or whatever and and run everything through a vpn um but there, there are two, there are two issues that you raise. One is government control, and one is, of course, corporate control. And corporate control is absolutely unacceptable. So, for instance, you know, the technology exists right now with with dynamic digital advertising boards that they can, through your own profile as you pass by. They can assess your gender and your age and flash up gender and age specific advertisements. Um, and of course, that's highly concerning. Um, and again, I always go on the, um, uh, the I always go on the cookie settings, which all websites start insisting that we fill in. And I cross off all access to cookies so that uh, I'm not going to get any advertising uh, set on my previous preferences. So as, as long as you're um, fastidious about that, you can minimise that kind of... Yeah, you can do, that, but there's got to be a, some sort of um, thing out there that will allow you to protect yourself and not give as much information um, to people. And because bearing in mind, I mean, you talk about gov there's government, you talk about government and you talk about corporates, uh, but the thing is, you're going to find, I think, in time that, particularly now that with the coronavirus and everything, it's an ideal opportunity for, again for the pharmaceutical industry to, therefore, um, greatly benefit from what's going to happen. And actually, the more money you actually have, the more control you actually have, mm. as opposed to the government. And that's going to become very intertwined. Same with the technology companies as well; are going to become very intertwined with the government. And I've got to say, people who are in the middle, whether it's the middle, even the middle upper class, are going to actually have a very limited amount of personal freedom of their, whether they choose to or not. Again, I have no problem with that because, as I keep on saying, humans, well, indeed, Socrates, he, 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 he actually summed it up very nicely uh, because he said uh, when he was in prison, um, one of his friends said to him i've organized it all you can walk out of prison now <clears throat> and we will uh, there's a place outside greece where you can live in a lap of luxury for the rest of your life and he said he he said well, you know why should i leave and compromise my principles and he said please socrates what will people think of me if uh, if you don't escape, how will they know this is what you thought? They will think I put my money above the life of my friend. And Socrates said, well, you know, you do have a, a point, uh, but then why should you worry 
about the general people when the really sensible educated people will really know what the situation was and his friend says his friend whose name was Crito said uh, Socrates as usual you have a very valid point but then the power of the general people knows no bounds and your your predicament is a sad example of that and Socrates said no you're wrong the general people have no power whatsoever they are sheep who are led um, and therefore it's the leadership that's important um, and in, in fact the, the next point after that is he said if I break the law now because I disagree with it I will weaken the law so this, this brings us on to a very very important point which is you I, I may be carefully expressing statistical reasons why lockdown may not be the wisest point but this is not to say that the law should be broken even law that people disagree with should be adhered to strictly otherwise there will be anarchy and indeed in the preface to a lot of law books is exactly what socrates said people may not agree with all the laws but you have to stick to it otherwise there will be no organization and imperfect laws are what we've got and we have to work with them so yeah. that's that that's that issue sorted out but the but the, the point is that people are easily led and you're right corporations can lead them governments can lead them and right now we're seeing people walking around with masks and and scuttling uh, against walls when there are people walking around which which is complete nonsense let's face it um but they're doing it because they're scared and because that's what they've been told look i mean the thing is i remember when when they talked about introducing identity cards in the uk many years ago and i actually never had an issue with that i thought identity cards were a good thing because the only people who would really need to worry about identity cards were criminals in effect because if you're a good person, you you know you don't even you don't actually have to worry about it because you're not going to be on the radar. Uh, but if you actually have, um, but it, the thing is, if it comes to a point where any every little petty thing can actually be highlighted and managed, because now you you would be able to manage it with the technology, people are going to get hit left, right, and centre for the most menial things. Um, and and that that would be my big concern. I and mean, I'll give you an example. And I actually went to argue it, and I lost. And I remember I was driving past the bus stop, and I saw one of my elderly neighbours who was actually catching a bus, and I pulled in to give her a lift, which is which would probably be the um, not just courteous but nice thing to do in effect. Um, yet because I pulled into just past the bus stop even though there was no other traffic whatsoever. Um, although people, people can argue that. It was caught on camera, and, I, and the next thing I got was a, I think it was a £60 fine. So it makes me wonder whether actually for that £60 fine, is it worth me actually stopping and actually giving an elderly neighbour a lift home? Did you appeal against it? I did appeal against it, and I lost. And I lost. Wow. Uh, because the law is the law, as you say. Uh, the law is the law, even though I don't agree with it. No, I've got to so do use discretion, don't they? Um, oh, of course. Um, and the thing is, um, but I've, I've, got, I've got to say, I will not. Um, there's certain things I will not. I will not tolerate. Um, and that's what level of behaviour. Because when you actually think about it, the amount of yellow lines, and I'm not, it's not it's not about traffic, but the more people who actually drive cars now the more they're pushing people further and further out and they're charging them further and more and more and more to be able to park um, just to actually gain more income. And, you know, they're putting yellow lines in places where they shouldn't actually be yellow lines um, just because they can. So, and, of course, that will lead to eventually to a reduction in their income, which is the opposite to what they wanted. Yeah, because people won't people won't drive, and the thing is, they'll they'll come to they'll come to a point where people won't drive, um, because I think I mean I, I was I think I was speaking to a couple of probably um, millennials, I suppose young millennials or Generation X or whatever you want to call them now, and some of them aren't even bothering in investing in driving lessons because they reckon that within a few years there'll be driveless cars and it would be cheaper to actually hire a driverless uber 
for example, than it is to actually buy a car and spend on the insurance.